Hi everyone, just a short demo on how to render ambient occlusion with Arnold. Um, so what I've got here is just a, uh, a little sculpted head from ZBrush, um, but this works fine for mechanical objects, your hard surface objects. Uh, the basic setup that I have is uh, essentially a cylinder that I added uh, a chamfered edge to, so the original edge, if I undo, you can hopefully see. Um, just again, a, a simple cylinder, I deleted the top polys, took the mesh display and reversed it using the uh, mesh display reverse function, and then, uh, actually let's do that again, reverse, and then with, uh, with the mesh smooth preview on, which is three on the keyboard, I just tweaked and adjusted the sides here, pulled them up. I also usually make this thing large enough so that it covers uh, an area that won't block the camera, so when I need to get closer to the object, I can, I can sort of be inside this giant sort of um, placeholder, and it's usually just a good uh, background, simple background for uh, display purposes. So let me uh, grab that face again or that head, zero in on it. Uh, the simplest thing you want to do is hit Control Shift A to select everything in the scene, right click, assign new material. So I'll bring this over and we want to uh, make sure Arnold is enabled. If Arnold is not enabled, we'll go to uh, Windows. Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager. I'll bring this window open. I'll quickly scroll down because it's in its own little category called, uh, it'll just say something like M2A, Maya to Arnold. So I'll say Load, and if you want this to be your default renderer, which I do at this point, I'm going to just enable Load and Auto Load. So Auto Load will make this uh, plugin load automatically every time we open up uh, Maya. We'll close this up. Next up, always good idea to check your render settings. So again, I'll pull that window over here. So I want to make sure we render using not Maya software, but Arnold. You know, Arnold uh, excels in a few ways. It's it's really great at uh, simple render controls. Um, a lot of the defaults for your render size here. Um, you know, I usually test at very low resolution, but since ambient occlusion is rather direct, I may want to test at higher sizes like HD 720. My final output will be HD 1080. I always like to also set my format. So again, I, I tend to go with TIFFs. You know, PNG, TIFF, JPEG for this particular exercise is fine. Um, set the compression and none in this case. I'll just set this to TIFF for now. Um, so full HD, we can, again, I might test render it a little bit lower res, but I'll have to remember to switch this back to full HD for my final output. And the Arnold render, basically it's got a, a sample setting here. Um, in this case, I've got no glossy surfaces, meaning I've got no reflective shiny surfaces. Hey. So, yes, uh, when rendering, you can try to disable certain features uh, glossiness in this case is not used. Refraction, which is a glass calculation, is not used. Subsurface scatter, not necessarily used in this case. So if you want, you can turn these down. Uh, in some of my testing, it looks like uh, Arnold doesn't necessarily care if, if those things are not used anyways, but it's something I tend to do when I render. So um, next step is really very simple. You can select all your mesh. Right-click, assign new material select the Arnold category and then we have ambient occlusion right here. So it's really that simple. We uh, put this on and we can do a quick another quick render. Um, so this is basically what the result will look like. So you can try to affect um, the, the overall look. Um, let's just pull this thing back out. Um, so if we go to the ambient uh, shader, um, you know, there's basically a spread value which is already at max. There's a, a near and a far clip. So sometimes if you increase the far clip, this allows the shading to extend outwards further. Um, so depending on the scene, you may have to increase or decrease that number. So I'm, I'm extending the far clip, which gives us a little bit further shading. Uh, the problem with this, though, is that it can give us a little bit more noise. So if we zoom in, we get a fair bit of noise. So again, I tend to go low, lower resolution when practicing and rendering. Uh, I may bump the samples up to four just to test this out again. Let me uh, zoom in. And we'll 
we'll do another quick render. So if we uh, zoom in on a particular area and try to render that specific region, I'll try one more with uh, a little bit higher samples. So there's usually uh, two factors. Um, so this is coming out a fair bit smoother. Um, again, I don't think I need to go above four or five samples. Uh, the next step would be going into the render settings right here. And then there's the camera anti-aliasing itself. So if we bump this up again, usually to, for me, for, for um, kind of quick previews like this, a setting of five on the anti-alias will be fine. I'll go back and do another quick uh, sample of the render. And it's actually, you can sort of see, it's much, much smoother. There's a lot more crispness and detail. Uh, right? We get way less of that noise if we compare side to side. So this left side is fairly noisy. This is the sample region that I've been rendering. So, you know, even if you're rendering full resolution, but you're detecting noise in certain areas, sometimes it's very, very helpful to just pick an area that um, might be of concern. And we can uh, zoom in with the mouse wheel scroll and then do another quick render of just that specific region, just again to, to do a little comparison. So again, much nicer results, and I feel like I'd be ready, just about ready for my final render. Uh, last couple of steps, I can hit the, uh, basically the, uh, yeah, the resolution gate, so I can kind of see where the framing is going to be. So I usually want to fill the frame as much as possible. Um, in the outline, I suggest, you know, if you want, you can do multiple renderings from multiple angles. So for that, you can always just Photoshop the multiple renders together, or you can duplicate your object. The only problem is if your mesh is extremely heavy, this might be slow for the renderer. So, um, but it's, you know, it's your call, I think, whatever you feel is most efficient for your project here. Let me just move this out of the way so I can see this a little better. There we go. So again, I think um, if your mesh is in the millions, maybe even tens of millions of polys of smoothing, it won't be efficient to have clones of your object. You'll have to just kind of render from one view, maybe pick a second view just to show uh, another aspect of the model. Um, so this is uh, more of a production-based render rather than just using Viewport 2.0. So final step, um, I'll go to Common. Um, I'll set this to Full HD. And... Uh, one other note I should mention, so there's anti-aliasing, so that's basically the number of uh, times the pixels is, is sort of looked at, analyzed for quality, it's basically sampling, and usually the higher the number, the smoother the result. But again, you start to increase render times dramatically, so for me, for this, the purpose of this exercise, and if I'm sending little uh, images to clients, for example, I'd probably max out at five samples on the camera anti-aliasing. You could also increase diffuse as well, but these things all multiply, so as you see, there's 25 samples here. Um, and if this number changes, right, let's say to 8, you see the camera anti-aliasing samples go up. So um, it's basically this number squared, so this number times itself, right? So 8 times 8, if we set it to 8, would be 64. And you see the total number of samples goes up to three, uh, 384. Um, so all this is, f uh, you know, they're all kind of uh, additive, I guess you could say, right? So the few samples, and that... As those samples add up, it adds to render time. Uh, one last thing that I like to do, there's gauze. So gauze is at 2.0. So basically what that, that means is for every single pixel, it analyzes two pixels uh, above, diagonally, below, to the left, and to the right in all directions to average out the pixel. And it does give you a little bit of softness. When I'm rendering full HD, I usually actually like a sample width of three. So it's going to analyze three pixels up, three diagonally, three left, diagonally down, right, uh, below, uh, bottom right to the right and upper right. It does add a little bit of softness, but I find it gives a, an almost um, photographic look to the render, but it does again add render time because it's mean, it means that every pixel gets looked at a little bit uh, a little bit more closely. So I'm gonna hit render one more time, and I may just pause the recording while it renders. So this render took about two minutes in Arnold, um, and this is about the quality I'd expect for a presentation. So nice smooth results, low to no noise, um, and also reasonable render time. Um, and it does look like, actually, I think I hit the wrong resolution option here. You can see part of my model is cut off. So if we want a full view of the mesh, we should actually be opting for this uh, resolution gate rather than the film gate. 